Good evening, everyone, and thank you for tuning in. It is my distinct pleasure to proudly introduce what is considered by me, myself, and I as the objectively best movie review series on YouTube, and that is David Napolitano's epic masterpiece, The 52 Week Movie Challenge. Of course, in the beginning, there were the legendary film critics Gene Siskel and Roger Ebert. And then Dave came along and made every other critic after them look like fanboys. Watch as this god among noobs makes the correct takes with reviews of films he watched for the first time. Kill the damn baby and save yourselves, you f***ing idiots! As selected from a modest list of films yet to be seen, while Dave certainly made other reviews that only real film fans can enjoy, his review of The Umbrellas of Shabor served as the mere warm-up to what can easily easily be considered by any rational human being the magnum opus of his objective classic. Sit back and enjoy this review of Casablanca. There's something about watching a classic film that turns out to be great that feels so rewarding. Not only do they open the door to all the films that it would influence decades later, but they also demonstrate impeccable craftsmanship that holds up on its own right to even testify to such a stature. You might even say that Casablanca's nearly 80-year-old greatness still retains as time goes by. Yeah. Well, you know, that's just like, uh, your opinion, man. Casablanca is the 1942 wartime romantic drama directed by Michael Curtiz. The film takes place in the titular locale on the French Morocco. Rick Blaine, played by Humphrey Bogart, is the owner of Rick's Café Americaine. One night, his former lover Ilsa Lund, played by Ingrid Bergman, enters the joint because... Of all the gin joints in all the towns in all the world, she walks into mine. She's married with Victor Laszlo, played by Paul Penreid, who turns out to be a resistance leader fighting the Nazis. Knowing that Rick could be of some help, Ilsa enlists Rick to help her get Victor out of Casablanca so that Victor can continue fighting against the Third Reich. There are a couple of kinds of classic films out there. One is where you can't believe you haven't watched and you end up loving it when it's over. There's one with a popular reputation even though the film itself isn't all that great. And going to Casablanca made me realize there's a third kind. You're constantly told how important and timeless it is that it posits a worrying question. What happens if the film turns out to be merely good or just okay? In this case, Casablanca is a film with such accomplished and striking craftsmanship, yet it has such an emotional resonance that makes me forget that it was made in 1942. My favorite aspect about Casablanca is its effortless ability to be so many different genres, tones, and techniques all at once. It's a vintage wartime drama, a resident love story, a stylish noir thriller, a confidently dry comedy, and a passionate melodrama. Sometimes its filmmaking is fluid and immersive, and at other times it's simple and understated. Despite juggling so much, none of those attributes ever lose sight of the appeal of its central narrative. The story about a man disillusioned by war and heartbreak who ultimately accepts his past reality by doing the right thing for today and tomorrow. I really love how Curtis films his scenes in Rick's Cafe American. I love how much attention he draws towards the life of the cafe. It visually and thematically contributes to so much personality to the place that it practically becomes its own character. Speaking of characters, its two leads are just perfect. Both Bogart and Bergman give such a wide emotional spectrum throughout this film with brooding cynicism and emotional hope respectively. By the same token, neither feel particularly one note. Look at this flashback to the good times that Rick and Ilsa had. You just see all the excitement and hope that they would lose as time goes by. One of the film's most resonant attributes is Max Steiner's score. I was already a big fan of his work from King Kong, but his work on Casablanca is simply rapturous. Much like the performances, Steiner nails a wide spectrum of emotions throughout the film. In some films, a big score can dampen the emotional impact. But if there's love, dear, those are the ties that bind. And you'll have a family in your heart forever. All my love to you, Puppet. You're going to be all right. Bye-bye. 
The scene itself is good, but the score is so schmaltzy that it makes the dialogue feel redundant. I don't know if the score should have been cut for this scene or that the score should have replaced the dialogue, but the score doesn't let the scene speak for itself. In Casablanca, however, that is an entirely different story. Is that can on fire? Or is it my heart pounding? Well, it's a new German 77, and judging by the sound, only about 35 miles away. Yeah, I'm getting closer every minute. Here, here, drink up. For the life of me, I simply cannot imagine this film working as well as it does without that score. Not only is Steiner's score itself tear-jerking, but it perfectly complements the haunting sound design, the emotional performances by Bogart and Bergman, and the melodramatic dialogue. All of these attributes form an artistic unity that works as one complete scene. Given its magnificent craftsmanship, I am not the least bit surprised that Casablanca has had the impact on Hollywood that it did and continues to do so. In fact, am I the only one that finds this film slightly familiar? You have a rugged anti-hero in a fedora, he's morally neutral, endeared to tragic romance, he eventually grows a change of heart, must fight against Nazis or achieving a greater power, and has the final confrontation with the Nazis in Northern Africa. Oh my god, it all makes sense now. <laughs> Casablanca gave birth to Raiders of the Lost Ark! <laughs> That's it. This is the best movie ever. It makes me have a newfound appreciation for classics. To be honest, I don't really blame for the hesitation for people going into them. The first thing you see is how everybody loves them, but you don't really get to know more about why that is. This disconnect ultimately creates a status quo for these classics that feels intimidating, even for myself. It really comes down to promoting the discussion about the technical and cultural aspects of these classics to really understand why they really work, as opposed to using their reputations as a gatekeeper for discussion. Gone with the Wind has an important place in American cinema. It's technically marvelous, but it's also shamelessly racist. Citizen Kane is still one of the greatest films of all time, but it still has the elaborate technique to make it a timeless testament to that stature. Going back to Casablanca, it's the universality of its craftsmanship and appeal that make it a Hollywood masterpiece. Overall, Casablanca is a film that I'm going to cherish for a long time. Even though I've only watched it twice, it only gets better with every single viewing. Even when I was writing the script, my appreciation for it just deepened the more I thought about it. I don't think it even matters what kind of film lover you are to appreciate it. Whether you're a cinephile, a regular film buff, or even a casual film watcher, Casablanca is a film with a universal appeal for just about anyone. On a scale of 1 to 10, Casablanca is definitely Vintage Hollywood. So what's your take on Casablanca? Have you seen it? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Also, what's your favorite classic film? How old is a classic? Well gee, here I am thinking it revolves around the silent era and Hollywood's golden age, but according to the National Film Registry, a film can be considered a classic as long as it's been released before 1996. God, I'm so old. But hit that like button anyway, subscribe, and ring the bell so you'll know when I post my future videos. You can also find me on Twitter and Instagram at FilmGeekDave. That's all for today and I'll see you next time when I review a winner of the Best Original Score Oscar. I think she's got it. I think she's got it. The rain in Spain is mainly in the plains. By George, she's got it. By George, she's got it.